All right, good afternoon. I'm Command Sergeant Major Jerry Ellis Jacobitz from 32nd Army Air Missile Defense Command here at Fort Bliss, Texas. And I am joined today with Dr. Evelyn Hollis, retired Command Sergeant Major, and the first uh, female Command Sergeant Major in a combat arms uh, branch. And so, so, so what do I call you, Doctor or Command Sergeant Major? Well, you know, Sergeant Major, I get called doctor most of the time now. All right. So, you know, I hear Sergeant Major often. Right. <laughs> I would assume that through the thousands of soldiers that you've led and came in contact with during your career, that it's probably hard to erase the Command Sergeant Major part uh, from, their, from their minds, and, and me included. And, um, you know, I had the honor to work with you here on Fort Bliss, so although I wasn't in your battalion, um, but you did sit on my Audie Murphy board when I was a young uh, staff sergeant. And, uh, you know, just remember being, having the first uh, female command sergeant major in the combat arms and the air defense artillery uh, was, a, was, a, was a pretty awesome big deal for the soldiers here on Fort Bliss. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, so what it was, it's starting off from that, you know, I was reading your bio in, in, a, in an article that you produced um, that was produced about you. And you talked about um, that your mother was kind of the catalyst for you joining the Army. Absolutely, Sergeant Major. It was just really quite funny that we were walking in a uh, small little Youngstown, Ohio, and uh, doing some window shopping, doing those kinds of things, and my mom is, where she's like, hey, you know what? Let's go in this office. So me, just thinking, okay, she just wants me to know or see. She's like, I, you know, I always wanted to be in the Army, and... When I left there a couple of hours later, I had joined. Wow. So, just like that, and all because she said she had wanted to be uh, in the Army herself. And at that time, I was the only family member that had ever joined the Army. Years later, I would ask her, like, how is it, because I have four other sisters and a brother, how is it that I am the only one <laughs> in the <laughs> Army? And none of my other sisters ever joined, but she told me that and I joined. And I am still enjoying this journey and my relationship with the military after all of these years. Yeah, you continue to keep on serving uh, right now, right? And currently you work at, what do you work at now again? The Sergeant Major Academy. Uh -huh. I am an associate professor there in the Department of Command Leadership. That's so. awesome. I, I knew the answer to that, but I just wanted to kind of have you say it. But, um, you know, so, you know, you've been trailed. So you said you're the first person in your family uh, to join the military, but you've been trailblazing a lot uh, throughout your career, right? I think so. Um, I was just thinking back to when I first came in. Uh, you know, I listed as a 71 Lima, so an administrative specialist. And I was looking at the career path, like, of what that meant. And you know, at that time, that um, there was specialist rank, and there were sergeant's ranks. And um, when I saw that, in that career path of the 71 Lima, I would never be a sergeant. Then I thought, I think I need to be a sergeant. I want to I want to do those things that the NCO creed talked about, which is, you know, taking care of soldiers. And so that was my first uh, look at MOSs that would be the path of sergeant staff sergeant versus specialists, five, specialist six, specialist seven. And I chose air defense artillery. Well, we're glad you did. <laughs> and you, know, you kind of kind of said that that you know that, that that you wanted to be an NCO so that's why you joined air defense what but what made you join air defense at that point particular point in time in history I think um, I'm not I really had I'm not a lot of knowledge about air defense artillery I think I was just looking at what positions would lead me in the path of a non-commissioned officer and Will I be able to achieve goals in that particular field? Uh, administrative specialist, I only selected that because my mom said, oh yeah, you know, it was that time where women kind of did 
women things, you know? <laughs> so she's like, yeah, you could be a secretary, you could do this, you could do that. And I did think I could do more than that. So um, I saw that uh, MOS and I said, that's a challenge. I think I want to do it. That's so, awesome. And, and also, I think they were trying to open more um, MOSs, more specialties, more jobs for women. So, yeah. And, then, and uh, if I remember correctly at that point in time, that was one of the only combat arms that was open to, MO, to, to women in, in the Army. Absolutely, yes. Absolutely. Yes, it was. So you took the yes, challenge, huh? Yes, it was. Yeah. Could you could you just tell me and describe to the, the the audience out there? You know how, what you know what was your experiences when you transitioned into uh, from you going basically from human resources right mm -hmm. um, to combat arms in the West? I'm sure there were some challenges that was out there. <laughs> uh, I think it was, well, yeah, and and when I look back on my career, I'll tell you this: I found a letter, and my mom kept everything that I had from the time I joined the Army. So I had found a letter from when I was in basic training. Um, the basic training course I was in, it was a pilot course for the integration of men and women. Wow. <laughs> so I was really shocked to see that, saying, wow, I was in a pilot course where now they're integrating men and women. So there was one platoon of female soldiers and all the other platoons were male soldiers. So that was my basic training. So I think, uh, uh, you know, there were, <laughs> there were things happening all along that I didn't actually realize was happening. And, and the idea of women, you know, be having more accessibility to jobs right. and positions. And, you know, my favorite saying ever, being all you can be. Right. Being all you can be in the military so um i yeah i just thought wow that is so interesting now that i look back on my 27 so years in the army um but once i first came here to fort bliss in 1980 again i was just kind of faced to me it seems with very few women and a lot of um, male non-commissioned officers a lot of um, people that I thought did, had a lot of different practices and standards that I like to incorporate into how I was going to be leading as a non-commissioned officer. So um, I had several courses where I was the only female. I also, looking back again, found a picture of, uh, let's see, what it was, now it's called SLC. But it was called uh, BNOC? BNOC, yep. BNOC. So in BNOC, I was the only female. So that was, I think, back to that time we would go to the field exercise. And, and there's no separate um, <laughs> place. I'm there with everyone else. It's not like they were going to give me my own barracks right. or my own tent. Uh, so... Yeah, that that seemed to be something that, in every school that I was a single female, and that was challenging in that, you know, really didn't have a lot of other women that I could talk to at the time. So I kind of just really did a lot of my own <laughs> mentorship, or if you, if I, if that even makes sense. <laughs> Absolutely, I think it makes a lot of sense. You know, like I said, you were, you did trailblaze, um, and it, it you know must have taken a lot of bravery, probably some self reflection to to transition from HR over to to a combat arms branch, and I, I think that's you know that just speaks volumes about the kind of leader that you are. Uh, I don't know if you know this or not, but uh, about two years ago we had our first uh, female uh, ranger uh, that graduated from ranger school. Uh, now first Sergeant Janina Simmons out there. Nice. Yeah. You know, and, and so, you know, obviously that was her accomplishment, but if it wasn't for, you know, um, leaders like yourself, that might not have ever happened. Oh, uh, so that, that, that opened up a whole bunch of doors. And I'm, I'm kind of reflecting back because, you know, almost 30 years ago, a little less than 30 years ago, uh, you came in, you were the first female in combat arms, and now uh, all the branches of service in, in, the, in the military are open to all of our females out there. Absolutely. How, how does that make you feel? 
as a as a female leader and that uh, that, that blazed that trail for us. Wow. Well, I you know I do get asked that um, a lot of times, and it didn't feel like it at the time. Um, but I'm happy to be the role model because I hope that I am presenting and being the type of individual that others would like to emulate and that I am adhering to values, still the Army values, because um, uh, that has been my life and it still is my life for the most part. So, yeah, absolutely, yeah. No, that's great. Hey, um, so. Uh one thing I was uh, was noticing is just kind of reading up on some of the information. You recently got an award. Um, you were inducted into the Army uh, Women's His uh, Hall of Fame, right? Yes, yeah. yes. Back in 2018, very awesome to go to Washington D.C. and get inducted into the U.S. Army Women's History uh, Hall of Fame. And what um, that. I guess basically what we were looking at was like, what, how have I contributed to, um, you know, just the the women and the air defense branch in itself, and I felt like um, that was such an honor to have had someone write it up, and actually it was Command Sergeant Major, retired Cynthia Pritchard. Oh wow, that's awesome. The, right. Two phenomenal uh, female command sergeant majors out there. Yes. And I think you became a command sergeant major in, I might have this wrong, but I think it was 2006? Yes. yes. And so, um, obviously, first female command sergeant major out there uh, in, in combat arms, right? Mm -hmm. And we probably said that a lot of times, but so excuse me if I said it too many times. But um, what challenge did you have as, the, as a command sergeant major in, uh, back then? What, what, was, what was the... You know, what was the best reward that you had uh, as a command sergeant major? I think uh, the best reward I had as a command sergeant major was hearing soldiers talk and seeing them emulate things that I did. That was totally the best reward ever to see that, um, wow, that I have influenced the people in my formation to the point that I was gaining their trust and commitment and that really was the best reward and to see that those soldiers um, are continuing to be those fantastic leaders and, and, I, and I even now today being over at Sergeant Major Academy really get to see some rewards because I'll see and meet so many soldiers that was in my organization <laughs> and they're like oh do you remember me and i'm like no i don't think so but bring you know bring me tell me some things that i might remember and that is so rewarding to just kind of see how you have been able to be a part of someone's life and help them progress and be the uh, the true professionals that so many non-commissioned officers are. Absolutely. You know, again, I'm, I'm just uh, kind of a little bit starstruck because I'm sitting here and, and, and hearing you talk about that, you know, I think that a lot of leaders don't understand how much they impact uh, soldiers in their formation. Uh, and and it's, 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 you know, same thing, kind of a little bit on my, my side of the house. You know, I have people come up and they, you know, hey, you know, you were my NCO at this point in time, um, but I think, you know, the, the legacy that you left is probably, you know, way further reaching than what, I've, what I will always ever be able to accomplish. So, again, I really appreciate you coming here um, and spending some time with us and, and talking about your story. Um, and so, again, just, just so everybody knows, um, uh, we t uh, you know, currently you work at the Sergeant Majors Academy, right? I do. And, and so I one more time, what do you do for the, for the team out there? I am an associate professor in the Department of Command Leadership, teaching, of course, military leadership, teaching about culture, teaching about, you know, best practices for our, our future leaders and hoping that uh, the things that we are uh, imparting to those leaders, well, they will take that information and go out and be that that best leader that they can be. Well, there you, you heard it, team. Command Sergeant Major, retired, and Dr. Hollis. Um, 
you know, still out there making an impact on, on her formation. And uh, so thank you again uh, for coming here and spending some time with us and uh, look forward to keeping in contact with you. Awesome. Thank you so very much, our Major. Bye.